Well, thank you very much for the kind invitation. I would love to be with you there in Uganda or even with you virtually, but unfortunately it's the middle of the night for me, so I'm unable to be there for the Q&A. I'm delighted to talk to you today about strategies to cure HIV. So I'm going to start with some definitions. What do I mean by an HIV cure? We largely use two terms, eradication or remission. Eradication means there's no virus detectable at all. Basically a classic cure, what you might see, for example, if you have influenza or if you have COVID-19, you completely get rid of the virus. That's what we call eradication. The other potential definition for a cure is remission, which is a bit like what we consider in oncology, whether you, where you have treatment for your cancer, the cancer goes away, but it's always there at a low level and could potentially come back at any time. When we say someone's in remission, the virus is at low but detectable levels and a person is off ART. Transmission risk is zero. That's very important. And it's important to realise that even though there's very little virus there, the person will stay antibody positive. And that's because that just means your body has seen HIV in the past. We actually interviewed people in Melbourne to find out what was preferable for them in regards to an HIV cure. This is one cure, one quote from a man, a gay man, 43, living with HIV for 18 years. He said, do you know what that idea of remission makes me feel? Cheated, actually. It's not a home run and we need the home run. We need the home run to push back against the stigma and discrimination because second base isn't going to cut it. So we hear the community when they say that, but I think that remission will be the first path towards ultimately eradication, which will be very difficult to achieve. The other misconception around cure is that people also would like to be protected from HIV infection. So not only are you cured, you don't need to worry about becoming infected again. And again, that is a difficult thing to achieve and most cure strategies are not targeting a strategy to both eliminate HIV and protect from HIV infection. But in the long run, that would be the ideal target product profile. And I'll get back to target product profiles at the end of the talk. So I thought I'd start with some examples of where HIV cure has occurred. And the most famous, of course, is Timothy Brown, who was cured of HIV in 2009 after receiving a bone marrow transplant from a donor who was naturally resistant to HIV. The donor lacked the receptor that HIV needs to enter a cell, CCR5. Timothy stopped antiviral therapy shortly after the transplantation and effectively remained virus-free for about 12 years. Unfortunately, he passed away in early 2020. Now, for 10 years, we didn't know whether this was a one-off case or whether this could be repeated. In 2019, a second case was reported. This man's name is Adam Castileo. He lives in London. And he too had a bone marrow transplant from a donor who was naturally resistant to HIV because the donor was CCR5 negative. Adam had a different blood cancer, but needed the transplant for blood cancer. And he is now off treatment for three years with no virus detected. So both these men, men have, have been cured um, and virus has been eradicated from their body. Or should I say intact virus? You can see fragments of the virus, but not intact virus. There was a lot of excitement earlier this year when a patient from New York, this time a woman, was shown to be cured after a transplantation. The difference here was that this woman received a different type of transplant. She received a combination of cells, cells from an adult and cells from cord blood from a baby. The baby cells were resistant to CCR5, but adult cells were normal. It's much easy to, easier to find and store these baby CCR5 negative cells. So there's a lot of excitement about this because this is less harsh on the person. Um, it's more widely available because you can store baby CCR5 negative cells. And interestingly, this woman didn't get very sick with the transplant. So proving that if you have all of your cells that are CCR5 negative and therefore resistant to virus, you can potentially be cured. And this woman has been off, off treatment now for just under two years with no viral rebound. Now, there are other examples of cure that don't require transplantation. The first was a group of people called post-treatment controllers. This was first described in France in the Visconti cohort. And these were people that started antiretroviral therapy 
Shortly after infection, within six months of being infected, were on treatment for about three years and then stopped their antiviral therapy. The virus is not going away. It's there at very low levels but under control. And similar studies have been now replicated in, in the US and in Canada and many other places. And most of the evidence points to the fact it's the immune system doing the job here. So very, very different to cures following bone marrow transplantation, but tells us boosting the immune system can really help. And then we have these two new cases that were described in 2020 and 2021 of two women who were infected with HIV but never went on antiretroviral therapy. They were elite controllers. They could control the virus on their own. But when the investigators looked more carefully at the virus that was in these women, there was no intact virus. So we know elite control happens in around 1% of people infected with HIV, but usually there's a lot of virus there, even when it's at very low levels. In this, these two situations, only defective virus was present, and that's sort of shown here in this cartoon where the red cross indicates defective virus. How did these women get rid of intact virus and land with only defective virus? We don't know the answer to that. We're getting clues and we think it's related to where the virus is inside a person's DNA, the actual location of where it integrates, and therefore which cells the immune system can see or not see. Um, and this is you know, initiating a lot of really interesting new work. So I think, as you all know, when you don't, on not an antiretroviral therapy, but lots of virus in the blood, as soon as you go on treatment, virus rapidly disappears from blood and someone's viral load becomes undetectable. But in most people, as soon as you stop antiretroviral therapy, virus rapidly returns. And this is because the virus never goes away. When someone is undetectable and doing very well and living a very normal life, virus is always there and it's in hiding and it's in hiding in HIV latently infected cells. What does that mean? Well, this is a schematic of a cell. This is a person's DNA or their genetic code, and the virus becomes part of someone's genetic code. Many viruses, many viruses have a latent form. A few viruses do it as well as HIV does it. So HIV has two main forms. The productively infected cell where the virus gets in, you can measure it because the DNA is positive. The virus is active, so it produces copies of itself. We call RNA. The RNA produces protein and then makes new viruses. And this causes the cell to die. And this is what happens in people, lots and lots of productively infected cells in people who are off antiretroviral therapy. However, in latent infected cells, the virus is there, so DNA positive. It's not making any RNA, it's not making any protein, and therefore it's invisible to the immune system. And it's probably also acquired some tricks to survive. So we know these two forms of HIV infected cells can persist on treatment, and there's probably a spectrum of activity. It's not all or nothing. Um, there is um, these very slightly infected cells and then a spectrum of activity. So what are we trying to do when we talk about curing HIV. Basically, this is the problem. These are the latently infected cells that persist in people on treatment. If we could get rid of every single cell, therefore we would have eradicated the virus. That's exactly what happened, we think, with Timothy and Adam Castileo. Another pathway to a cure, though, is to reduce the pool of infected cells, increase the immune system, and induce remission, as we saw with post-treatment controls. And I said earlier on that this is probably easier to achieve than ultimately eradication, though we are aiming to do both. So what are some of the ways that we can um, eliminate uh, or control virus? Well, first approach is using what we call combination therapy. It's a combination of targeting the virus and targeting the immune system. And there are many different ways you can target the virus. The first is very early initiation of antiretroviral therapy, and I'm sure you'll hear more about this from Tumbi. Very early initiation of antiretroviral therapy largely limits the pool of infected cells. It will not cure HIV, but it will make the job easier for the immune system. We can use latency reversal, that I'll talk a bit about later. Drugs that induce suicide of the cell or pro drugs or immunotoxins. 
Latency silencing, something called lock and lock, to basically lock that virus into the DNA. No clinical trials yet of latency silencing agents. And gene editing, we can actually use gene scissors to directly snip out the virus itself. At the same time, we want to boost immune function, and that can be done with antibodies, with vaccines, something called immune modulators, which boost or reverse T cell exhaustion, something called CAR T cells, which are sort of designer T cells that are engineered to recognise infected cells, an approach that's been pioneered in cancer. And again, gene editing, because you can use gene editing to boost the immune system, such as making antibodies. So one area that I've been very interested in a long time is latency reversal, or what we call shock and kill. So here's your latently affected cell. The virus is integrated to the host genome. It's silent. It's invisible to the immune system. And the idea is to convert it into a productively infected cell, now visible to the immune system because it's expressing HIV proteins and RNA. And this is done with a latency reversing agent or an LRA. And the hope from this was that this would induce cell death. So you'd get rid of that cell either through the immune system or the virus. But what we've learned so far is just using latency reversing agents is not an, enough. This needs to be paired with something that kills that cell, either through immune enhancement or pro-apoptotic drugs. And these combination studies are really just beginning. Um, they look quite promising in animal studies with some combinations actually leading to a cure in animal models of HIV. In people, the studies have been small, not yet demonstrated cure, but this is an active and ongoing area of research. What do we mean by combination immunotherapy? How do we deliver it? Well, here's a schematic of someone who's infected with HIV goes on antiretroviral therapy, preferably early, viral load is reduced to undetectable levels. And then these interventions, antibodies, vaccines, CAR T cells, all the things I've told you about are largely introduced in people on antiretroviral therapy or while they stop antiretroviral therapy. And the goal of all this is that if this is the line of viral rebound without an intervention, the goal is that with an intervention will delay the time to viral rebound or will potentially lower the peak of viral rebound or do both. And really to date, most of the interventions have all been done in people on stable ART. However, there's some interesting new work showing that maybe we'll have a better chance of getting rid of latently better cells if we do the initiation here at the time of initiation of ART. I mentioned gene therapy has got a lot of promise, and that's because gene therapy can do multiple things. We can use gene therapy to attack the virus or enhance anti-HIV immune responses. We can use gene therapy to protect uninfected cells, engineer them to not express the receptor of CCR5. Or we can use gene therapy to purge, to directly eliminate the virus itself. The real challenge with gene therapy is how to deliver it. At the moment, gene therapy is delivered largely ex vivo, and you've got to take out all those blood cells, engineer them and put them back, which is very complicated. Or in vivo would be much better. We could just gene edit directly in the body. So this is what I mean by ex vivo gene therapy. Cells are removed from someone living with HIV. They're modified ex vivo to remove the CCR5 gene. CCR5 negative cells are then reinfused back in the person. And this actually does work, it's safe. And you can get quite a large number of CCR5 negative cells, but not enough yet. The other approach is to use in vivo gene therapy. You directly inject those gene scissors. And this has been done already to allow the introduction of antibodies. So you can in vivo, you can generate, somebody can make someone generate much better antibodies, which is a very, very exciting advance. There's lots and lots of science going into in vivo gene therapy, and I suspect this field is going to advance very quickly. Ultimately, whatever we do, we must get it to the community, and we must get it to the communities with the highest incidence of HIV, particularly in Africa. So how are we going to implement this? Well, the first thing is to make sure we have a agreed target product profile, an agreed understanding of what an intervention might be able to achieve. And I think when we talk about target product, product profile, we talk about what's minimally acceptable and what's optimal. An optimal um, target product profile is kind of easy, you know, an injection that kills everyone. 
what, what's a minimum target product profile look like? And so a group of us have been working on this together with large um, input, input from the uh, community members. Target product pro population for the, in the foreseeable future for an HIV cure will be adults on stable ART with viral load less than 200 CD4 counts greater than 500. We're not really talking about introducing cures yet for children. What would an effective type, um, cure look like? Well, it's not going to, at the beginning, it may just be HIV RNA less than 200 copies per mil for at least two years, effective in maybe 20% of individuals and average relapse rate of less than 10% per year. This is what we say is minimally acceptable to then proceed to develop that product. This is not where we want to end, it's where we want to start. And what about safety and tolerability? A very big issue for people living with HIV on antiretroviral therapy and doing very well. So overall, no, we do not want any severe grade four adverse events. If those grade three adverse event, events occur, they should be reversible. And how acceptable this is really depends on clinical efficacy. And grade two irreversible events, we really don't want to see at less than 1%. But I asked you to look at this paper and that goes into the whole thinking around target product profiles, or what we want a cure to look like for the community. So looking forward, how might, might we see this roll out? Well, at the moment, we are here. We've got antiretroviral therapy, oral. Some countries have already got long acting ART and potentially soon we'll have broadly neutralizing antibodies that may even be able to be given every six months. But ultimately, if we want a cure and people to stop antiretroviral therapy, what we might see first is HIV remission with combination immunotherapy, as I've mentioned, potentially followed by ex vivo cures using gene or cellular therapy. And ultimately, it'd be great if we could develop an in vivo cure with gene therapy, which I suspect will come later. And the overarching goal of all of this in one day, develop a single shot cure. We're many decades off that, but that's really where we're headed in the future. And I'm going to end there. Thank you very much. And um, I'm sure Tumbi and others will be happy to take questions. Thank you.